In today's video, I'll be showing you how I created this clip. Keep an eye out for the blurred section of video. The InShot video editor does not have the ability to blur part of a video. When you apply the blur effect in that app, it is applied to the entire video. The first thing you'll want to do if you haven't already is install the app. Just swipe down from the top of your iPad screen to bring up the search box. Type Video Leap in the search box. Use the timestamps in the video description to move to a specific part of the tutorial. If you clicked on this video, you are aware of what the video leap icon looks like. Just tap on View in Store, and then switch to the App Store. I've previously downloaded this app, so I see a cloud. I'll just tap on it to begin downloading the app. However, if you are downloading the app for the first time, you will see Get instead of the cloud. Then you'll have to authorize your download using Face ID or your password. Tap Open to launch the app. The first thing you're going to see when you open it for the first time is this welcome screen. Swipe left to move through these introductory screens. Then tap on Dive In. This part of the installation process is brand new. You'll need to log in to launch your creativity using Apple, Facebook, or Google. I'm going to tap on Continue with Apple because my Apple ID and password is already entered into my iPad. If I tap Continue with Apple, next I see this screen, which prompts me to pay for the app. However, I don't have to. If I tap on the X in the upper left-hand corner, the screen will disappear. Tap Allow to allow notifications, and then you can use the app. The first thing I'm going to do is tap on the plus sign and allow video leap to access all of my photos. Then I'll add my video clip. I'll select it and tap add to project. This clip was shot on my iPhone 11. That's why it's vertical. To play a video clip once you've added it, tap on the play icon. The clip will then play at normal speed. If you select a clip, you have options in the toolbar below which are specific to that clip. For those of you who've used video leap before and have noticed that the split icon is missing, it has moved. Notice the split icon is the icon above all of the other clip options when a clip is selected. I'm going to move back to the beginning of the clip and tap on transform. When I do, you'll notice that I have several options. Mirror will flip my video horizontally. Flip will flip it vertically. Rotate rotates it around as you press it. Fit will fit the clip to the current width of the preview window. And Fill will take the clip and stretch it out so that it fills the entire preview window just like I've done here. Now if I play the clip, it's much easier to see. Video Leap allows you to work with different layers, which is necessary if you want to add text, video effects, or other graphics. Here I'm going to blur part of the video. I'll make a cut where the cyclist appears on screen, then I'll tap on Glitch, and choose a Pixelate Glitch. This is the easiest way to blur video using the free version of Video Leap. When I do, a green bar is added. This is a second video layer. You can have up to three overlapping video layers before you'll be prompted to upgrade to Video Leap Pro. I can change the shapes that are used to blur, and I can also change the size of the shapes. If I move the slider to the right, notice the cubes which I've selected get really big. If I move it all the way to the left, they get too small and you can't see, and you can see through the part of the video that you're trying to blur.
that looks about right. You can change the size of the pixelate widget, the pink circle on the screen, by pinching and zooming. You can also long press on it and drag it into position to cover the portion of the video that you want to blur. Once you've done that, you need to remember that video often moves, so you'll have to use something called a keyframe to control the position of the blur as the video plays. You can add keyframes by tapping on the little diamond here. A pink diamond will be added to the pixelate layer. Each time you tap on the keyframe marker. Next, you need to slowly scrub through the video and any time the cyclist appears outside of the pixelate widget, I'll just long press on it and move the pixelate widget to cover the cyclist at the new position. This will automatically add a pink diamond or a keyframe. Take your time while doing this to make sure that the pixelate widget moves as smoothly as possible. Right now the pixelate layer is selected which is why you see the pink circle on the screen. When the video plays and everything is deselected, you will not see the pink circle move across the screen. Use the pink circle as your guide when you're blurring any part of your video. Once you're done, you can manually add keyframes if you need to. For example, I'll put in one extra one here at the end, just to make sure that we don't see the identity of the cyclist. To remove a keyframe, just tap on the keyframe you want to remove to select the keyframe, and then tap the keyframe icon once more. To deselect a layer, the pixelate layer, just tap anywhere on the screen. Let me start to play the clip, and as the playhead comes up to the pixelate layer, you'll notice that I'll deselect it by tapping on the screen, but the video continues to play. Then we see the pixelate layer appear on screen as the cyclist moves through the shot. Once you're done, you can export your video by tapping on export in the upper right hand corner. Since my settings are all fine, I'll just tap on save and it will save the video to my camera roll. Don't interrupt the export at any point or you'll have to repeat it because the video may not export properly. Once the number reaches 100%, you can find your exported video inside your camera roll. This is the final clip. 